Hey everybody, welcome to Off The Show Board Game Reviews. This week we're looking at Deep State. It's a two to four player game of set collection and worker placement that plays about 60 to 90 minutes. Now this video you're watching right now is part of a series. This is actually a tutorial video. If you're just actually interested in a quick overview or a sample gameplay or just my final thoughts on the game, check out those other videos, but this video itself is gonna teach you how to play the game. Now in the game of Deep State, every single player is a puppet master of a short shadow organization working behind the scenes to try to take over the world in an alternative 20th century world that's happened after the wars and everybody's working through the mass media, working through the public, working through the government and trying all these different aspects and effort to gain the most influence and take over the world. Now players are striving to get victory points in various different ways. You get victory points by working on projects, you work on get on victory points by covert operations, you get victory points from treaties, you get victory points from getting these objectives, or you can just work on set collection which will allow you to get victory points from having major objective sets, or you can have secondary objective sets which are also going to give you more victory points based on the cards you manage to purchase by sending out your agents to all these different locations and again in an effort to control everything and become the grandest puppet master of them all. The game of Deep State does play two to four players and there are a couple different variations that you need to look for if you're playing the game based on a two player game, a three player game, or a four player game. The first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to shuffle up the infiltration deck and before you do that you need to go through if you're playing a four player game you're going to use all these cards. If you're only playing a three player game you're going to find every single card that has a number four in the lower right hand corner and remove it from the game. If you're only playing a two player game, you're gonna also go through and find all the cards that have a three in the lower right hand corner and also remove all those cards from the game. So if you're playing with four players, all the cards. If you're playing with three players, remove all the fours. If you're only playing with two cards, two players, remove all the three and the four player cards from the game. But since I'm showing you how to play a four player game, we're gonna show you with all the cards on the deck. After you've done that, you'll need to shuffle up all the treaty cards into a stack. You'll need to shuffle up all the Men of Action cards. Now, I actually suggest playing with Men of Action cards. Even if you're not familiar with the gameplay, they do add a lot of variety and a lot of fun, and they can prevent one little issue that I found that does crop up in the game. Check out my review and I talk about that just a little bit. It's something that can hamper new players, so I actually think it's something really good to throw in right from the beginning of the game, at least in my opinion. Also, make sure you have the two World War cards out of this deck when you are shuffling it. You can shuffle in if you like, but then if you happen to draw one during their initial starting of the game, you'll need to redraw the cards. So I just make my life a little bit easier and I don't include them in the start of the game. After you've shuffled up all the decks, you'll need to organize all the covert operation cards from least to greatest. You're not gonna shuffle these, you'll always organize them from the six victory points on the top, all the way down to the 14 victory points all the way, I'm sorry, the 16 victory points all the way on the bottom. So just go from six all the way up to 16 victory points and put them off to the side. You'll then want to put out all four of your projects in a row at the top of the board, right above where your operation cards are going to go. And then you're going to organize your operation deck. But before we do that, every single player needs to get six treaty cards. Now, when you're learning the game, they suggest just giving every single player four treaty cards. But the full way you're supposed to play the game is every single player gets six of these treaty cards. And you're going to look at all six of your treaty cards. You're going to figure out the two that are least worthwhile to keep or the ones that don't make the best beginning strategy. You're going to look through all these cards, pick two of them, and you're going to discard them. Once all the players have done that, you're going to take all these discarded cards and you're going to shuffle them back into the tree deck. Every single player is going to get 10 agents in the color. Three of them will start in their active pool. The other seven will be in the reserves. And then after you've done that, the only thing left to do is to figure out which player is going to start with the supervisor token. They suggest the person who has most recently been involved with some spy light activity or a book is going to be the supervisor. I like the old-fashioned way of just pulling out a die. Whoever rolls highest is going to be the starting player. Finally, place out all your secondary actions along in a row where they're easy access to all the players. This is a finite supply, so once all of these secondary action cards have been used up by the players, that's the last of them. Do note that there are only four of the green cards, so these are the quickest ones that will be going, so watch how you're going for them. And again, they are a finite supply. Much like your agents, you only have 10 agents for you. If you manage to use up all your agents, that's all that's available to you. The last thing you'll need to do is you'll need to put out these special tokens right here, which are going to be special secret agents. 
that are be associated with certain treaties that you manage to make, treaties with the Accusa, treaties with the Triads, and treaties with the Costa Nostra. Those are all the treaties you can make based on these treaties you're going to access, and you're now ready to begin the game. At the start of the game, you're going to lay out your infiltration zone, and the amount of infiltration cards you're going to put out is based on the amount of players. In a four-player game, you're going to put out nine of these cards, and in a two- to three-player game, you're only going to use eight of these cards in the beginning infiltration row. The game of Deep State is played out over rounds, and every single round is broken down into turns. Every single round is going to continue on until the complete infiltration zone is empty, and then you're going to end the round, you're going to move on to the next round by refilling the, treat or the infiltration zone. Once you are unable to fill the infiltration zone because there's not enough cards left in the draw stack there, that is actually going to be the final round of the game. You're not going to have another round, but the round that you're going to end where you cannot, you have enough cards to fill up the infiltration road, that is the actual final round of the game. Now every single round is broken down into three phases. The first phase is the action phase where players are going to use their agents to go out and take over cards, or they're going to use agents to go over after these covert operations. They're going to use their agents to work on these projects, or finally they can just gain extra agents into their pool. After the action phase, you're going to move over to the takeover phase where players are going to be able to take these covert operations that they place enough agents on them. They'll be able to take these infiltration cards, again, if they put enough agents on them, or they'll be able to advance on these projects if they pay the requirements on the turn. If at that point there are still cards left in the infiltration zone, you're going to go back to the action phase and then go back to the takeover phase. You're going to keep repeating that until there are no cards left in the infiltration zone. Once that happens, you're going to go to the third part of every single, the third phase of every round, where you're going to have the treaty phase, where players are going to each take turns playing one treaty that they can pay for, if they can pay the cost of that treaty. That treaty is going to go into play for that player. That round is going to end, and then we're going to start the next round again by filling the infiltration zone, and we're going to continue to play on until the game comes to an end. At the start of every action phase, except for the very first action phase, the beginning of the round, the supervisor token is going to move to the next player in player order. Whoever just gains the supervisor token is immediately going to recruit two agents for free. Now, if you're playing with the expansion, again, I do suggest you play with the Men of Action expansion. At least I suggest you do it. Instead of taking these two free agents, you can take one of the Men of Action cards, take it in your hand, and you don't have to show it to other players. Now, you don't have a limit of how many of these cards you can hold in your hand, so you can keep as many of them as you want. But do know at the end of every single complete round, you cannot have more than six treaty cards in your hand. Different back, so you can't tell them apart though, but you can have as many of these Men of Action cards as you like. So again, anytime you're getting agents, whether it's through the supervisor action or taking the gain and agent action, you have the option of either taking the agents or taking one of these Men of Action cards. Again, that's completely your choice. After a player has taken the supervisor token and received their two free agents, the player with the supervisor token and the supervisor token only is limited to taking only one of two actions. The two actions they can take is they can work on infiltrating one of these cards, except the trick is you can only work on the first three cards in the infiltration zone. Now there's a way to break that rule, and I'll get to that when we cover the projects, but just know that you can only interact with the first three cards in the infiltration zone. You can look at the cards that are coming up in the future turns, and after the end of every single turn, when the cards are purchased, these cards are going to slide down, again giving you access to the first three cards. But always note that you can only interact with the first three cards in the infiltration zone. And to gain a card in Infiltration Zone, you simply take one of your agents and pay as many agents as it costs on the bottom of the card. Now, you don't have to pay attention to the color of the agents. That just represents the color of the card. But that's the minimum amount of agents you need to place to lay claim to that card. Now, why do I say minimum? Because the amount of agents that you place down there can be bumped off if the next player in player order decides to spend more agents than you. So while I could play just one agent down here to claim the real estate, if the next player in player order happens to be blue, and if they pay two agents, they're going to bump my agent off, and now they are now in control of this card as long as they're not bumped off. Now, I get a nice bonus for being bumped off. Anytime I get bumped, I get a free treaty card to add to my hand. Remember, at the end of the round, you cannot have more than six treaty cards in your hand. But also do note that people can continue to bump players green if they want this card really badly, can pay more than two there there by paying three agents. This person will get their agents back in their active pool. Bumped agents go back to your active pool, not in your reserves. And now the green player is now the one most likely to get this card, and blue gets a nice bonus of getting a treaty for being bumped. 
Once all the players have continued to do that action, we'll explain what happens at that point, but let's go ahead and back to the player who has a supervisor token. The next action you can do if you happen to have the supervisor token, if you don't want to infiltrate location, is you can work on a covert objective. Now these covert objectives have a very basic amount of victory points and worth anywhere from 6 to 16. So if you get a whole bunch of them, they can be worth a lot of victory points, but just note that the agents you send towards your covert operations are going to be sacrificed. Again, depending on the projects you manage to work on, you can kind of modify those rules, but just understand any agents you send here, all but one of them are going to be sacrificed. And the way you do that, you just simply pay as many agents as a requirement on the bottom of the covert operation. That ranges from five all the way up to 10 agents for the final one. So make sure you're planning for that very, very carefully. Of course, you can use shadow agents. We'll explain how they work in a little bit, but just understand that only agents and shadow agents can work on covert operations and work on these intrigues. Shadow agents can never work on projects, so just remember that for when we get to that part of the rules. So if I decide to send my agents over here to this covert operation, I gain that card. The nice thing about these covert operations is nobody can bump you. You can be bumped off these infiltrations, but these covert operations, once you pay for them, they're going to go over into your pile. Those are the only two actions you take if you happen to have the supervisor token. But if you don't have the supervisor token, you have the option of taking over up to two extra options for your one single action. If you don't have the supervisor token, you're free to work on infiltration, you're free to work on covert operations, you're also free to work on projects, or you just take the simple action of just claiming one agent or foregoing the agent and taking that one men of action card. When you claim a project, you're going to have to pay the cost of the projects and understand, much like the covert operations, agents you send to the projects are also going to be returning to your supply, not to your active pool. So remember that they go to your reserves. If you ever forget it, there's a nice little slash that goes right through the agent to remind you that they are actually, well, let's just say destroyed instead of murdered or homicided since it's, you know, covert operation style game. If you look at every single one of these projects, it's going to list a requirement that you're going to pay to work through the various stages of every one of these projects. Now, every single project has five stages for it, and for all but one of the projects, Deep State, the only thing you have to pay for the very first one is just simply sacrifice one or two agents depending on the project. So if I want to get level one of the Unified Nations, I'm just simply going to take my agent and send them them as a tracker and remind me that that is now going to be tracking. I'm not going to add any more agents to this. This one agent is going to be continued to track this by moving along the tracker. So if I continue for my next action to pay two agents, and if I have their other costs, I'll explain other costs in a second, I'll just simply discard these two agents and advance on the track. And again, if I want to go to the third level, if I have this requirement, again, I'll explain that in a second. And if I happen to have three more agents in my pool, I can simply pay those three agents and advance to the next stage of the project. Now, the thing you need to understand is for the Unified Nations, it's one agent for the first one. For the coming turn, it's two agents for the first one. For spyware, it's two for the first one. But when we get to the two to the deep state, it's a little bit different. So I'll explain deep state all the way at the end. Now you're also going to notice every single one of these projects has a requirement of a symbol, whether it happens to be the peacekeeper symbol, whether it happens to be the spy symbol, what happens to be the symbol where it means you have to pay for something. I'll, I'll explain in a second. Or if you happen to have this symbol right here, if you don't have that symbol in your tableau, you can't move that far on the project. So let's say I happen to have the consulate's card in my tableau. This card has the peacekeeper symbol on it. So as long as I have this card in my tableau, I permanently produce one peacekeeper symbol. I don't spend it. I permanently produce that symbol. So that means I can move up to level two of any project that has that symbol. There's only one project that has that symbol right now, but just future proofing this video in case extra expansions come out. So if I want to move up to level three of this project, I need to get another card that has at least one more peacekeeper symbol on it. Or if I happen to get a card that has two or maybe three peacekeeper symbols on it, those are all going to add up all together and manage to allow me to get all the way up to the final level of this track. Again, you have to have it to achieve that level. Now let's go over to the deep state, which is just a little bit different. The deep state project is the only project where instead of actually having the symbols, you're going to actually spend those symbols by discarding these cards. So to work on the first level of deep state, I need to have two of these yellow pyramids and I'm going to have to discard those cards. So plan appropriately when it comes to your strategies. And in the end, there's no refund that comes back when you overpay for it. So for example, if I want to get Secret Society's level one, and I only have this card to pay for it, you'll notice it has the three symbols to pay for it, so I'm going to overpay for it. 
but this card is still going to go to the discard pile. I don't get any change back. So make sure you're paying attention very carefully when you're spending these cards. Again, cards for the deep state, you spend and discard. The cards for the spyware, for the common turn, and also for the unified nations, you just have to produce that resource. After all the players in player order have a chance to take one action and one action only. Again, the actions are working on infiltration, working on covert operations, upgrading a level on a project, or earning one agent or one of these men of action cards. Once every single player has had the chance to do that, we're gonna move over to the takeover phase. Now the way the takeover phase is gonna work is every single player is gonna claim any cards that they manage to put agents on, and that also works for your covert operations. And then after every person has claimed the card that they managed to take over, they're gonna remove one agent from every single card that they happen to have in their tableau, whether it happens to be a infiltration card or a covert operation card, and they're gonna add it back to their available agent supply. Again, these don't go back in reserve. These go into your available agent supply. Now again, there's a project that allows you to break this rule just a little bit, and I'll explain that in just a few moments when I go over all the projects. But this is really good because this means that if you happen to purchase multiple cards on your turn that also happen to have multiple agents on it, or if you still had cards left in your tableau from prior rounds that still have agents on it, you're gonna pull one agent off from every single card and they're all gonna go back into your active pool. Now, the trick with the covert operations though is that any agents left on this card at the end of this takeover phase are gonna go back into your recruitment pool they have all sacrificed themselves in an effort to accomplish this goal for you. So be careful with the agents you're sending for these covert operations. They're gonna go back to your recruitment pool. You can recruit them later. Any agents that you go from your working on your infiltration are gonna go right back into your available agents and they can be used on later turns. After the takeover phase, if there's at least one card left in the infiltration phase, we're gonna go back to the action phase where all the players in player order, first thing we're gonna do is the Supervisor token is going to move to the next player. That player is going to gain two agents. And then player order, starting with the player with the supervisor token, we're all going to get one action. And again, from there, we're going to go over to the takeover phase, go back to the action phase. There's still at least one card left in the infiltration phase. And we're going to keep repeating that until we get to the point where there are no cards left in the infiltration zone. Once there are no cards left in the infiltration zone, that will be the last takeover phase of the round, and then we're going to move on to the treaty phase. Now, during the treaty phase, every single player gets the chance to play exactly one treaty from their hand. Now, every single treaty has a cost on the bottom of the card. If you can pay for those costs, and again, these symbols, much like the projects, you don't have to pay it, you just need to pr produce that much of a whatever that happens to be or whatever that resource happens to be. So for example, to get this card into play, all you need to do is make sure you produce at least two peacekeeper symbols. If you do, you're simply going to put that card in play, do what the text of the card says, and then you're going to continue on with the next player also getting a chance to play a treaty. Now do understand that every single player can only play one treaty during the treaty phase. Even if you happen to have multiple treaties in your hand you can pay for, you need to pick the one that you want to play and understand this game only plays five or six rounds. So you're going to be limited on how many treaties you can get into play unless you can activate deep state or unless you can play treaty cards that are going to break those rules. And trust me, there are cards that are going to break those rules. After that treaty phase, we're going to start another round where we're going to fill up the infiltration zone with the amount of cards based on the amount of players, eight or nine. And we're going to start another round, again, making sure we advance the supervisor to the next player who gets their two agents, and we're going to continue going on like this until the end of the game happens and will occur. Now, I do understand one little thing with the supervisor. If you don't have any agents in your reserves, you're not going to get any extra agents. You're limited by the amount of agents that come with the game. That's 10 agents for every single player. If you happen to draw a World War card while you're trying to fill out the infiltration zone at the start of every single round, remember you can't have a World War card in the very first round because the rules tell you that if you draw one, you're supposed to just take it out, keep filling up the row, and then just reshuffle the deck. If you follow my tutorial video, you'll see that I tell you not to conclude these in the beginning and just shuffle these in after you got your infiltration zone. But if you happen to draw one of these World War cards while you're filling out the infiltration zone, you're gonna continue filling out the infiltration zone and not replace this, you're gonna pull it out of the infiltration zone and not replace it. So there are two of these cards in the game, so if a nine player game happens to be going on, if you draw one of these while you're filling out the row, you're only gonna have eight cards to buy. If you get both of these, you're only gonna have seven cards to buy for that round, but only for that round only. And these cards are gonna put a permanent effect into effect for the entire round and for that round only, and then they're gonna be discarded at the end of the round. And the simple effect that these will add is it's gonna make all your projects cost one more agent, 
and one less resource in order to go ahead and work on those projects. And these do compound. So if you happen to have both of these world wars in effect during the same round, that means every single project is going to cost an additional two agents and two less resources. So that means that if you're having to work on the Unified Nations right here, you'll see that if we had two world wars in effect, it would cost five agents, but only two peacekeeper symbols because two world wars are going to compound together. And that's how the world wars are going to change the infiltration deck. And now this is a good time to explain exactly all the bonuses you get from the projects. The very first project is going to be the Unified Nations. Now the Unified Nations is very nice, especially if you're working for a covert operation strategy. Because remember how I told you earlier that after you get the covert operation, you're going to take one of your agents, pull them off, and then the rest are going to go into your reserves. Well, every level in Unified Nations up to level three is going to allow you to pull back an extra three agents from any of the cards that you manage to take over this turn and also the cards you have from prior turns that still have agents left on them. So it kind of behooves you if you have five agents on this one project to take your one agent off. And if you happen to be at level three right here, take three more agents off and then you only lose that one agent back to reserves. So that's what Unified Nations is for. It allows you to take extra agents back every single takeover phase. The next thing we have is a common turn, and what this allows you to do is to get ghost agents. Now, ghost agents are a limited agent, and these are double-sided tokens. It's either one or three. So basically, the first time you get it, you get one. The second time you go to level two, you're going to take two of these. And then when you go to level three, you're simply going to discard one and take it back to level three. And I'll explain to you why you only want one of these at a time anyways. Once you have this, you can use these to help you purchase infiltration and also help you to get these covert operations. Now these are really great for covert operations because these are never discarded. Once you have them, they're permanently part of your spy network and that's a nice little bonus. The other nice little bonus for them is every time you take an action that involves the infiltration or the covert operations, they will always go with your other agents, which means you have extra more agents at a location, meaning other players are going to have a more difficult time taking those locations away from you. So let's just say, for example, on our turn, we happen to have this row of cards out here looking like this. And I've managed as the yellow player to get up to level three on the common turn right here. And if I have my agents, I can take out three agents, send them to this location, which normally would not be enough. But remember, your, your shadow agents always go with your other agents on your actions. So now I have a total of six agents on this location. Now, you don't have to actually put this token out here on top of the card because this token is going to go right back to your available supply. These agents are never spent. They always travel with your other agents, which means they're really great if you happen to go over to these covert operations because when that covert operation comes back, and if you're smart enough to plan for getting really high level on the Unified Nations, all three of these guys will come off. This shadow guy will come off and you get a nice free extra victory points. So that's a good thing to plan for. The next thing we have up is the spyware. Now remember earlier when I told you that the infiltration zone is just the first three cards? Well, every level up to level three on the infiltration on the spyware is going to allow you to have you yourself only higher access to further cards in the infiltration zone. So for example, the blue player happened to be at espionage level three. They have access to the first three cards. Plus, since they're level three espionage, they have additional access to the next three cards on top of that, up to a total of six. So you can see that if the blue player is the only one who happens to be level three, and nobody else is on any levels on spyware at all, they can buy these three cards right here without ever having to worry about any competition from any other players or having to worry about them bumping them off because they don't even have access to those cards at all. Now the final thing we have is going to be the deep state section. Now remember, deep state is a little bit tricky because you have to permanently spend cards to pay for it and these cards are permanently going to be discarded and removed from your tableau. So make sure you're playing for that accordingly. But the first time you take deep state, you're going to draw a card from the treaties and then you look at your entire hand of treaties and you're going to play one ignoring any costs that may have on the bottom. Now this can be very, very powerful, especially if you can't get the resources you need to play a card that's part of your strategy. But just know that you can ignore all the requirements for any tree that you play. And that treaty is going to go immediately into play. And the cool thing is that this is going to happen before the treaty phase. And this is the way you can get more than five or six treaties played during an entire game. As you can see, as you go through all five levels, that's going to give you a possible five extra treaties you can play. So level one is going to allow you to draw a treaty and play one from your hand. Level two will allow you to do the same. Level three is the same. Level four is going to allow you to draw two more treaties and play one from your hand. And then finally, level five is going to give you draw two treaties and play one from your hand. The final thing about all these projects is if you get to level four or level five, they're going to give you some bonus points. So also factor that into your strategy. Deep State is worth 25 and 50. The rest of them are worth 20 and 40. But don't know, or that's nothing really to sneeze at. That's a decent amount of victory points. 
Now, I'm not going to bore you by going over every single one of these actions and every single one of these cards and every single one of these treaties. Just understand a basic rule of the game. Anything on the bottom of the card is going to be a cost that you must produce. Everything on the top of the card is going to be the resources or the bonuses you're going to get from putting that card into play. That happens to work for your treaties. That happens to work for your infiltration cards. Again, the cost is on the bottom and what they're going to produce is going to be on the top. And finally, for your projects, what are the costs is going to be on the bottom and what they're going to produce is going to be on the top. If you have any questions, you can look at the resource guide that goes over every single one of these cards, every one of the requirements, and all the special symbols and everything they mean on the back. I'm not going to waste your time on that because it's all available in that wonderful resource guide. Players are going to continue playing over multiple rounds until there's not enough cards left in this infiltration zone deck to create a new row. As soon as that happens, that's going to be the end of the game. That's the final round. There's not another round coming up. Even though there's going to be one or two cards left over, that is still the end of the game because we don't have enough cards to fill up the infiltration zone. After that happens, players are going to add up all the victory points. Whoever has the most victory points, which is infiltration points, is going to be the grand one of the game. Now, players are going to get victory points multiple ways by these covert operations that they have managed to accomplish, by victory points listed on these infiltration cards, by working on projects, by working on treaties, or even by getting secondary objectives, which will work with our infiltration cards. All these things are going to work together and give you your grand victory points at the end of the game. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video on how to play Deep State. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them in the YouTube comments down below. I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as I can. You can also feel free to email me off the shelf board game reviews. That's otsbgr at gmail.com. I'll be sure to answer your questions through email as quickly as I can. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this video series, click that like button, click that subscribe button, and as always, thanks for watching.